There has been um, some information initially when we found out that Mallory had a hearing loss and we had gone to a doctor who, um, like I had put it off that she had sensory neuro neural hearing loss without doing any further testing at all. And um, I guess in, in my, what I found out is that you can't always go with your first opinion. It's good to get a second opinion because different doctors do different tests and have different ideas. There's no one answer for hearing loss. If you have a child who's born with a birth defect of some sort, there tends to be, well, this is how we fix it. There's no fix for hearing loss. There's not necessarily even something wrong with having hearing loss. So it was really frustrating a lot of times when we would go to one person who they were very oralist and they would only give the negative about signing. Or you'd go to the deaf community and maybe they only gave the negative about cochlear implants when really what I wanted to hear was the positive about their choice, their option, and then be given sort of the okay to make my own decision rather than feeling like if I make this choice I might be shamed by this community or I might be shamed by that community. That was really hard and really frustrating because it's already hard enough when you've got this beautiful little person who is depending on you and you want to make the right choice for them. The most specific example I can have is when the oralist teacher sat me down and said, if you sign with that child, he will never speak. And in my mind, I'm going, okay, but speech is just a means of communication. I don't care if I have to stand on my head and click three times for him to understand. I want him to communicate. Speech can come later. And it took me back when I heard somebody say, he's never going to speak. He's going to be rejected by the rest of society because this is a speaking society. And as a couple, my husband and I had to really sit down and process that and just decide what was best for our family. And at that time, what was best for our family was signing with him and being able to communicate with him. When we first found out about his hearing loss, I kind of went through this twilight zone moment where I could see everything and feel everything moving around me but my family seemed like it was stopped and we were going through this why me and oh my gosh what are we gonna do and we're not qualified to raise this child and now I look at it and I think thank God <laughs> we had a hearing impaired child thank goodness he came to our family because we are so much stronger because of it he's a remarkable kid he has got to be one of the most self-confident, happy, well-adjusted kids I've ever met. Now I look back and I think, oh, where can I get another one? I just, we know what to do, and I think that's the difference. We know what to do. We know how to parent a hearing-impaired child, and we're okay with it.